work. I want to see the wave. <laughs> David Bird, you did the, the award for the most waving. He was waving all the way in. That was wonderful. There we go. Okay. Now, just to make sure that your arm, do it with your other arm now, too. I, I don't want you to know these muscles, so I think I have to do both. Okay. okay. I want to get that on camera. That's so much fun. <laughs> Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the, the highest. Christ. Let us pray. As we now enter into the contemplation of the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ and meditate on the salvation of the world through his suffering, death, burial, and resurrection, let us pray together. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We have our special music.
The Lord be with you. We now prepare our illumination to prepare our hearts and minds for the lessons for today, and so I just ask that you pray in silence. God of grace, your word is like a song. It's the melody that we love to sing, the refrain that we pray that gets stuck in our heads. So as we return to scripture once more, we pray that you would allow us to sink into this song. Allow us to hear the truth in between the words. Allow the cries of the crowds hosanna to feel like our own. <clears throat> With open hearts and open ears, we pray. Amen. The reading of our lessons. The reading for today is from Psalm 25, verses 1 through 10. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exalt over me. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are want, wanton, only treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth. And teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I will wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love. For they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for your goodness' sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, <clears throat> therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right, and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his decrees. Word of God, Word of Life. Thanks be to God. As you were reading that, Jim, uh, especially the first part of that, I could just see Jesus praying those words uh, just before Palm Sunday, knowing what's going on there. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. In you I trust. Do not let me put to shame. Do not let my enemies exalt over me. So it's a wonderful time when our Old Testament and New Testament can come together. Let us prepare for our message for today, singing our center prayer, Alleluia, what a friend we have with Jesus. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia.
how many things you forgot? Yes. Do you remember? I'm going to pick a date out, see if you can remember this day. Do you know what you were doing on April 9th, uh, 2023? Think back to that day. What were you doing? Does anybody know? Reading. Weeding? Okay. Was it a Sunday? Reading. What? Was it a Sunday? Hold on to that one. <laughs> it was Easter. It was Easter. Now, do you know what you were doing? Now you know, okay, see, I just helped you to remember. But isn't that fascinating? You, you pick me up. I don't remember, but wait a minute. No, I, I do remember. How many of you remember just like, let's say, last Sunday? Some of you might remember last Sunday. I, I, I remember because as a pastor, I had a major phone call. And I learned about it in Bible study right after worship. I said, you are absolutely right. I did do that. Does anybody remember what that was? Yep. I got two people mixed up. Uh -huh. Joanne, who was it? Job and Jonah. 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 Okay. But I want to tell you why I got it mixed up. Is look at the pictures there. <laughs> That's why I got mixed up. I said, well, they look the same to me. And so I, I said, gee, I'm really sorry about that. For some reason, I had it. I went... It was spell check, that's what it was. Right? It was spell check, right? Yeah, yeah. I put in J O and all of a sudden it went to Job, Job instead of Jonah, right? It did it, it spell check. Yeah, that's what it was. Anyway, so but just last week. So some of you went, oh, yeah, that's right. Now I remember. Remember it. So I'm gonna pose a question and we'll come back to it. What do you remember about the story of Palm Sunday? We shared this in Bible study with us, but think about that for a What do you remember? What sticks in your mind about the story of Palm Sunday? And then we're going to talk about the story here. It's interesting because our text today starts out in John chapter 12, verse 12, the next day. I don't know about you, but when I read something that says the next day, I want to go back and found out, find out what happened on that day. And in order to find out what happened on that day, because this is the next day, we actually have to go back about a couple weeks to figure out. The joy of meeting on Sunday morning is that we pick parts of Scripture. The problem with that sometimes is, is that those Scriptures are in context, and when we take them out of context, when you hear something like, the next day, you go, wait, I'm, I'm, I'm not in place here. So let's go back and put ourselves in place. Go back a couple weeks ago, Jesus was in Bethany, and Jesus had just raised Lazarus. And at the end of that, it was well known that the Jewish leaders wanted to put Jesus to death. And then it says that Jesus went up to Ephraim, and if we put the map on, on the board there, you can see what maybe this will help you out just a little bit here. So Jesus was in Bethany, which is about a 40 minute walk to Jerusalem, to back. But Jesus goes off to Ephraim, which is about a day's journey walking. You see, Jesus really wanted to get away. Jesus didn't want to go to Bethany because, well, there was a threat of his life there. And as we find out, there was also a threat of life on Lazarus. So Jesus really has to get away. A whole day's journey. Jesus knows what's going to happen. Jesus knows all of these things. And he says, I have to get away. How many times do you say that to yourself? I have to get away. There was commercials on TV not too long ago in the last couple of years, you know, that, that need to get away. You know, all of a sudden they're in the middle of something. He said, don't you just want to get away? But Jesus had to. Because the threats upon his life were just increasing and increasing. The disciples knew that. Jesus knew that. And so he goes to Ephraim. And it's an interesting city. I, I, when I started looking at these things, is, um, if you go to the next slide, <clears throat> um, this is present day Ephraim, which is also called Tabak. And so what's interesting, too, as I was looking at this whole thing on the maps and also with pictures, um, as I said, it was a nice 40 minute walk from Bethany to Jerusalem. I just want to remind you is you cannot walk that these days. 
Why is that? Because there's a wall in between them. A wall that is meant to protect people, but it's a wall of separation. This is what's happening in Israel, in Palestine. Is that they're putting up walls, and that wall has been up there for many, many years now, to separate people under the guise of we need protection. And so Palestinians who used to uh, who live in Bethany and worked in Jerusalem, guess what? Most of them lost their jobs because they couldn't get there. This is the world that we live in today. Jesus comes and wants to break down all those walls. Jesus wants us to learn how to live together. And today we have that seen time and time again in Israel and in Palestine. So what happens is that Jesus goes to Ephraim, and he's there for a amount of time. But then Jesus comes back to Bethany, and the story that is just before this one is when Mary anoints Jesus with the oil and wipes his feet with her hair. And people are upset about that, especially Judas, but Jesus says, no, she is preparing for my burial. I'm not sure if the disciples heard that or didn't want to hear that, but that's the day before Sunday. Now we have the city there. So the question is, is what's really going on here? There's the building of anxiety here. Raising of Lazarus and someone went and told the Pharisees and they planned to put Jesus to death. In fact, they made orders that anyone who saw Jesus was supposed to arrest him or turn him in. There's the death warrant of Lazarus as well. Because the Pharisee says the world has gone after him, and we can do nothing. And the only thing they said is, yes, we can do something, is we can put him to death. That's the setting of our story for this morning. So what do you remember about Palm Sunday? What's one thing that you remember about Palm Sunday? You can raise your hand and say, what's one thing you remember about Palm Sunday? Palm Parade. Palm Parade, okay. Jesus right now, donkey. Jesus right now, donkey, okay, yeah. Big what? Party as they go. Big party. Okay. Big parade. Big party. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Do you ask me? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So all these things are going on here. What's interesting is, is that uh, usually, and I have to tell you this, usually on Palm Sunday we need to pick on Matthew, especially Mark and maybe Luke for the story there. And when I was looking at, at this um, sanctified arts song is they, they said use John's gospel. And I said, I don't think I've ever done that before. So if we look at John's gospel for it, it's, it's a very different version here. It's very fascinating to me. Because in the other gospels, who goes to find the donkey? The disciples do. Yeah. Thank you for being biblical scholars. Before that was. Um, the disciples go and find the donkey because Jesus says, go and find the donkey. And there's this whole long story there where John says, you know what, that's not important. <laughs> but who finds the donkey in the story that we just read from John's gospel? Jesus. Jesus does. John makes it certain that Jesus is in control. It's Jesus who finds the donkey. It's Jesus who says, it's Jesus who does these things. Jesus is in control where it looks like it's not in control, but Jesus has control. No, this is what I'm going to do. Because I know that this leads to suffering and death, but I am going to do this. And I'm going to do it on my own. So it's interesting, the question comes up as we look at the other Gospels. And John's Gospel is, where are the disciples? Not one disciple is mentioned in John's Gospel. Where are they at? Are they part of the parade? Are they just kind of stepping back to see what happens? And it's kind of interesting because we've been focusing on this season of Lent on Peter. So where is Peter? Where is the rock of the church? Where is he at here? He's probably like most other people is just watching. Not an active participant. Maybe in some respect, maybe you've got a palm branch or some other things. Maybe he's participating. Where's Peter at? Our picture for today, if you look at the, the right-hand side, the, the bigger picture there, is that that's a picture of Peter. You see the palm branches there. The, the one on the left-hand side is that's more for Easter, so we're just going to pretend that's not on there. 
So we're going to focus on this, but that's Peter. He's just watching. Think about what's going through his mind. Well, this is exciting, but I'm not sure. Everyone seems to be real excited here. This is a wonderful break, but I'm not sure. Jesus has told us some things. I'm not sure how this is going to, you know, he's just pondering this. Maybe Peter could get out of Hosanna because the crowd and the mob, everyone was so excited. Maybe he did that. Maybe he was right behind Jesus and, and he was excited by the crowd and his adrenaline was puppy. And he was, you know, like maybe that's what was going on with Peter. But John's Gospel specifically tells us is that the disciples did not understand these things at first. They don't get it. They don't understand. This makes no sense. Jesus has a death threat against him. Lazarus has a death threat against him. As far as the disciples know, there's death threats on their life as well. And Jesus just walks right out in the open and he's right in the middle of the parade as if none of that matters. Think about that. They don't get it. They don't understand. The image for today on the altar, and uh, if you put it up there, this is the image for today. It's kind of interesting. Because um, it's songs of loudest praise. That's what's going on. So you have the musical note there. And for all our musicians out there, that other note, what does that mean there? Get louder. Get louder, yeah, yeah. Someone also mentioned Bible study, it's the greater than or less than symbol. I said, well, that's interesting. It is, isn't it? That Jesus is greater than any of the thoughts of the disciples? That the disciples are thinking less of Jesus, of not knowing exactly what his divinity means as opposed to his humanity, because they were focused on the humanity, that Jesus is bigger than that. But the symbol is a crescendo is that Jesus starts out at the, bound, the bottom of Mount Olives, and as they're going up to Jerusalem, it just gets louder and louder and louder. And guess what? The Jewish leaders now know for sure that this is out of control. They have no control over this. They have to speed up their efforts because Jesus is really, really catching on. And then put this in the, the context that we have is, Jesus just raised Lazarus not too long ago. The people were looking and they were searching for something new. I made the contention of Bible study that I don't think that they were looking for a king, a very powerful ruler at that time. No, they were looking for new life because that's what Jesus brought. He raised Lazarus from the dead. That's what they were looking for. That word Hosanna, it means Lord save us. Lord, save us from ourselves. Lord, save us from what's going on in our world today. Lord, move us along here. Be with us. We are all under the threat of death because it's going to happen. It's going to happen. So how do we live our lives? It says again that the disciples didn't understand and didn't get it, but they did later. After Jesus' death, his resurrection, and I would say not even until the day of Pentecost, when they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they remembered. I keep saying this, you know, that old image that I keep saying this one is the light bulb goes off, right? And I have to I have to update my image, but you know the, the real when the fluorescent light bulbs first came out, you know, they'd go on, right? And then as time went, they got brighter. Remember those? Yeah. Uh, you know, it was years ago. I know that. But now we got the LEDs. So you don't have to worry about that anymore. Mike, remember? Thank you, Mike. Okay, okay. That's what it is. It becomes, and it just gets brighter. Oh, 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 oh. When there's that with the Holy Spirit, it's like, oh, now it all makes sense. But at the time, it didn't make any sense. Have you ever had that experience? What the heck am I going through, God? And you look back and go, oh, okay. It makes a little more sense now. Hindsight is what? 
2020. I'm going to say it's not 2020. I don't know why we say that, but I'll say it's 30-30. Maybe it's even 50-50, but at least we see it a little bit better. Then they remembered when all these things took place. So what helps you to remember? What helps you to remember? Sometimes we have people around us that help us remember things that we don't want them to remember. We don't want to remember, right? Like, thanks a lot for bringing that up. What do we remember? What helps you remember that you are loved? What helps you remember that you are loved? Right here. Right here. This helps you remember that you are loved. Because Jesus said, do this to remember me. That's why we do this. We don't do this because we love little tiny wafers and little cups of wine or juice. No. We do this to remember Jesus. Over 2,000 years, millions of people Remember Jesus right here, and we still say, Hosanna, Lord, save us. So we remember these stories, and we retell them. And on a day like today, we reenact them to remember the deep abiding love of God. We remember that when Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper, we remember what Jesus said on the cross, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. We remember that when they closed the tomb and the disciples were all alone together, we remember that. And we remember that Jesus rose from the dead and gave us a gift of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we forget that, but let us remember that when we take this and remember, do this and remember me. We don't get it sometimes. We don't get it a lot of times, let's face it. We don't understand at times. We don't understand a lot of times. We ask questions at times. Our hearts wander all over the place at times. And we're just like Peter. We don't get it because it doesn't make any sense. So we do those things to remember. We worship. We pray, we receive Holy Communion. That helps us remember. That's why we do this every Sunday morning. Because about Wednesday or Thursday, we kind of forget. God does love me. We come back, we receive it again. Okay, maybe this week I'll make it to Friday before I kind of give up on things. But there's always Sunday. So today, we begin a journey. We take the journey once more and we participate in this act of life of Jesus. From the shouts of Hosanna, to a meal around the table, to the shouts of crucify him, to the cross, and to the tomb, and finally to the shouts of he is risen. That's the journey that we're on this week. So let us join the shouts of loudest praise as we follow the one who gives us and helps us remember that God loves us passionately, no matter what. And that helps us to tell the world that God is good. All, all the time. time. All the time. God is good. Amen. Our sermon song for today is, uh, my song is love.
first part of our affirmation is dialogue. We believe in Jesus of Nazareth, who rode through the streets of Jerusalem on a donkey. We believe in Jesus of Nazareth, who challenged Rome's oppressive power with a peaceful protest. We believe in Jesus of Nazareth, who was surrounded by crowds of dreamers and believers. We believe in Jesus of Nazareth. So even today, we will sing songs of loudest praise. Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us proclaim our faith together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. This morning, again, as we move into our prayer time, a moment of silence. Um, as we have just seen the last couple days here, um, again, innocent people are caught in the middle of the traumas of this world. Um, again, imagine people in Russia just going to a wonderful music hall to enjoy music and whatever it else is they were going to enjoy, and again, interrupted by violence and death. We remember those people. Remember the people of Ukraine, remember the people of Gaza, the people of Israel. We pray, we pray, and we pray for peace. Let us spend some moments praying for peace. Understand it. We don't get it. It makes no sense. So we trust. We trust in a loving God that said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Let us add our voices of loudest praise to our song as we sing our first song. Lord, listen to your children.
Let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. Blessed one, today the church sings glad hosannas as we enter Holy Week. Prepare us to bear witness to Christ's suffering and death, endured for our sake. Gather your people around the cross and comfort us with resurrection hope. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. great. Renew your good creation and protect the balance of life on earth. Encourage the work of foresters, scientists, arborists, gardeners, and river keepers. We pray for the health of pollinating insects, songbirds, and native plants. Hear us, O Lord. Establish peace and justice among the nations. Hold to account any with authority to judge others. Grant that courts, legislatures, and local government will serve with integrity and passion. Hear us, O God. Bring hope to any who feel forsaken or forgotten. Make a way for refugees and asylum seekers. Reunite families enduring separation. We pray for any who are incarcerated, institutionalized, or in foster care, that they may know your love. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Give energy and joy to all pastors, deacons, worship leaders, and musicians. Bless baptismal candidates, their sponsors, confirmants, and teachers. Watch over those who travel. Hear us, O oh God. Blessed one, our times are in your hand. Sustain us in discipleship throughout our lives and receive us into everlasting life. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity that you give us to come and gather and worship. And today, Lord, we thank you for your passion, for your comfort, for your healing, as we focus in on people who especially need you at this time. Today, Lord, we lift up and pray for Berlet and Frida, Mary, Harriet, Dawn, Anne, Connie, Grace, Carl, Barbara, John and Jan, Sharon, Lois, Carol, Marcia, Doris, Janet, Daryl, Dennis, Ginny, Pat, PJ, Donna. And we also lift up and pray for uh, prayers for Jenna um, after her breast cancer diagnosis. We lift up and pray for Nancy. Carol and Ken and Kristen. We pray for the family of Doris Luther after her passing. We pray for those people who are in our hearts and minds at this time. Lord, we thank you for your presence 
in and among these, your people. We thank you that you are the great healer, and so we pray that you continue to be a force in their lives for healing, that you bring them comfort, peace, and hope, that you surround them with loving family members, and we pray for them too. We pray for medical teams that continue to be your healing hands in their lives. Lord God, we just ask that your presence continue to be with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so, Lord God, we again thank you for this day. And we ask that you accompany us on our journey. God of grace, receive all the prayers of our hearts as we take this journey, knowing it is a journey of life. And so we pray all of this through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please take a few moments to stand and greet those around you with the peace of the Lord as much as you're comfortable. Peace of the Lord be with you.
Ken and Carol, I just met Ken and Carol back there. Um, good to have you. Uh, recently moved to the Lakes. I said, let them know the Lakes, the assistant living place. So good to have you here this morning. Kristen. Kristen, back, okay. Kristen, okay. Now, my note says, I think the daughter of Sharon. Is that, okay, good. Good to have you here this morning. And then Linda, is that right? Is that right, Carol? Your friend? Linda, yeah? Nancy, I'm sorry. Nancy's here. And we have two people fighting over whose friend she is. <laughs> and Sue said, this is my friend Nancy. And then Carol said, this is my friend Nancy. And I said, whose friend is she? And Carol said, she's mine. <laughs> so anyway, it took two of you to get her here. So thank both of you to get her here. Thank you. So it's wonderful. Okay. All right. Uh, we will receive the offering. And as we receive the offering, let us sing together. We are an offering. His striving for justice and mercy is all for you. 
You were included in the story, and nothing can ever change that. So hear these words and trust them deeply in your bones. We have reason to sing. So hear these words and trust them deep in your bones. We have reason to sing, for Jesus Christ loved you yesterday, Jesus Christ loves you today, and Jesus will love you tomorrow. You are forgiven, claimed, and sent to serve. Go and sing, go out, trusting these words. Amen. We continue with the great thanksgiving. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. God of the lost and found, surely it is right for us to give our thanks and praise. For day after day we look for you, and day after day we find you. In the laughter of children, in the sun rising over the horizon, in the flowers of spring. Our seeking does not go unanswered, and for that we are grateful. So first and foremost, we come to you in prayer and say, thank you. For when we are seeking beauty, you give us mountains and freckles, green eyes and brown eyes. For when we are looking for reasons to hope, you give us rainbows after the storm and candles flickering in the window. And when we are seeking peace, you give us three-part harmony and the sound of rain. And when we are seeking justice, your life reminds us that Everyone is welcome at your table, and none can be turned away. As we see, and as we are at your table, we remember, we especially remember these words that Jesus gave. That on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body. Do this to remember me. Again, after the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my book. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this also to remember me. And so we remember. We remember and we give thanks. For all these reminders, we are deeply grateful. And yet, gracious God, our seeking does not stop. For even though your fingerprints are all over this world, we are not yet at the promised day. So in addition to our gratitude, we also pray for conviction. Do not let us get comfortable with our half-hearted seeking. Do not let us grow numb to the suffering of this world. Make us relentless in the pursuit of justice, relentless in the consoling of the grieving, in our welcoming of the stranger, and in the feeding of the hungry. Like a dog with a scent, may we walk toward your kingdom, never giving up, never wandering off the path. And as we see and as we seek, pour out your spirit on this ordinary bread and cup. May this meal be nourishment we need to continue seeking you in this world. Until your promised day, we will pray. Until your promised day, we will sing. And let us sing the Lord's Prayer. Thank you.
not for the people of God to remind you that all are welcome at the Lord's table. Please follow the directions of coming forward. You'll come down to the center aisle to receive the elements and then return to your seats by the side aisle. Um, during communion today, we have one of my favorite songs, and that's Remember Me. And so we pause to remember God and God's love for us. Come follow us.
Beloved, we are God's own people. Holy, washed, and renewed. God bless you and keep you. Shower you with mercy and fill you with courage and give you peace. Amen. And now, Jim, it's time for the announcement.
sack lunches to opportunity village on Saturday. And so many of you brought donations so that those nice <clears throat> sack lunches could be put together, and we appreciate that. Uh, I want you to know in advance that we will have the uh, paper posted there in the lobby with items that are needed uh, for the sack lunch program because it will be coming up before we all know it if, uh, toward the end of April. Thank you for those who brought <clears throat> As I said earlier, do take your bullets at home because the schedule is a little bit different, a little bit confusing this week, and it's all there for you in black and white. Thank you. Thank you for all that fucking stuff. It's just so great that we're doing some good things out there. So thank you for all of it. I have to tell you that the 50 sack lunches were put together by three people. And I tell you, I think it's wonderful because we have to find bigger sacks. <laughs> we started out with small, now we've got like big ones, and it's just so wonderful. So thank you for those three people. And just join them because they had the best time in the world. Uh, they, they even got to walk around and put everything in there. So thank you to those group of people. All right. Um, you do have the schedule for this weekend. So again, as Jim said, is take that bulletin home with you. So you got the schedule for the speaker out there. And...
Diana? Uh-huh. Sort of.